So if you just found out you're pregnant with twins or you've known for a little while and you're looking to get prepared, this is the video for you. My name is Ellen and I am a mom of identical twin boys. They are 16 months old right now. If I were to, for some reason, have to do the newborn twin phase again, all the products that I'm mentioning in today's video are the ones that I would pull out of storage. So yes, today is a newborn twin essentials video. I'm gonna be going through all of my essentials that I recommend you use and you get and you add to your registry. And I've put a link in the description to everything I'm mentioning today so you can either check it out for yourself or add it to your twin baby registry. And I've also added a link in the description to the Amazon baby registry because that's what I did. It's very easy, simple to use. And if you wanna go ahead and set that up and add some of these items to your registry, you will be all set. I'll break the video into three different categories. First, I'll talk about twin specific items. Then I'll talk about feeding supplies. So that includes nursing, pumping, and formula feeding because if you've never seen any of my videos on my channel, I did it all. I tandem breastfed my babies, I single nursed them, I pumped for them, and I formula fed them. So I have a ton of resources on all of that. And then the last category of items that I'll be talking about are just generic baby must-haves. But to make it specific for you guys, you twin parents out there, I'm gonna be telling you the items that I recommend getting two of and then ones that you really only need one of. My number one twin specific item is the Twin Z pillow. This pillow is wonderful and it will be used, I promise you. It's a great place to just put your babies. So if you've never had twins before <laughs> it's very important to have a little safe place to just kind of like put them and let them just sit there so they can just sit you can bottle feed both of them and then it ends up being a great playtime pillow where you can show them things you can flip them over on their stomach and have a little tummy time it is a great pillow wonderful design i highly recommend the twin z pillow i know you will all use the twin z pillow and you'll love it the second twin specific item i recommend is the double bottle warmer i've made a video on my channel of a tutorial of the grown z double bottle warmer and I'm not going to go into details of how to use it and uh, like why it's so amazing and wonderful, but I just recommend you get it. So for twin parents, it is absolutely a must have to have a double bottle warmer because whether you plan to breastfeed your babies or pump or use formula, bottles will inevitably come into the equation at some point. So to have this double bottle warmer, again, I'm not gonna go into it. I'm tempted to tell you all about my double bottle warmer. <sighs> I've made plenty of videos about it. You can watch those later. You will not be sorry. It's totally worth it. Okay, then the twin version of the My Breast Friend pillow is definitely an essential if you plan to try to breastfeed your twins. So there's the traditional My Breast Friend pillow and then there's the twin version. And the twin version is just what you would imagine, just a little heftier, it's a little bigger. I only need one of them. It is, it's comfortable and it makes breastfeeding a more comfortable and enjoyable experience. So I, I definitely recommend if you have plans of nursing both of them, at the same time, or trying it at least, you know, if, you, if you, you're gonna try, the twin My Breast Friend pillow is an essential. The twin bassinet that we used was the Halo Twin Swivel Sleeper Bassinet, and I totally recommend it. It is a bassinet that has a little mesh divider where both babies can sleep in it, and they can actually kind of like see each other through the mesh liner, and it's a swivel sleeper, but it spins spins in a circle and that's really nice you know many many times I'm in bed the babies were next to me and the baby on the outside was crying and I would just like take my foot spin the thing around and then get the one who was crying on the outside sounds like a small convenience thing but 
the little small conveniences of products like the Halo Twin Bassinet are what make it totally worth it because in the middle of the night to have to reach deep down, get another baby. I mean, I didn't experience it, so I don't, I can't speak to it. But what I can speak to was the ease and the convenience of the twin Halo bassinet. So it does, it spins around. It's a nice, safe design, it has little features on it. Like a, it vibrates, it has music, it has a heartbeat sound it has a little light to it has a pocket on the outside has some nice features but i really appreciated the spinning factor because you know when the baby on the outside was crying but then also if they were crying in the middle of the night and i was trying to comfort them i would just take my foot push it kind of like back and forth and rock it by myself and uh you know you gotta do what you gotta do and i really like the design of it then after they were out of the bassinet i did actually still use it for storage of like bottle parts and burp cloths so this thing got a lot of use out of it and i highly recommend it to any prospective twin parents out there so the baby monitor that i would recommend for twins would be this one that goes like side to side and off the top of my head i'm not remembering the brand of it but i i have put a link in the description to this one specifically for twins i like ones that actually are able to go side to side so you can look at the di different babies in the different cribs and zoom in and see what's going on in the cribs so yes that kind of a baby monitor i'm sorry i don't remember off the top of my head but the link is in the description to this this kind of a baby monitor and then my double stroller and my car seats so kind of putting these together because my car seats can actually go into this stroller so the double stroller that i highly recommend is the contours elite option of double strollers the one i got was the tandem stroller and that means just like the seats are one in front of the other and it's nice because in the beginning of the early days with the babies you can take the stroller seats out and put my maxi cozy seats into it about the stroller i did try to go the whole second hand route in the beginning days with the boys and second hand strollers are just not worth it in my opinion i do think a new nice stroller is worth the investment the contours brand that i got I really love it. The car seats that I have, the Maxi Cozy Miko 30, they are very nice, high quality car seats that are comfortable. And I specifically picked this kind because the weight minimum is, I think, four pounds. And so because twins are possibly going to be small when they're born, um, I wanted a car seat that was going to be safe for small babies. So the Maxi Cozy Miko 30, those are the kinds we got and we can take those and in the beginning days before we can actually put them into a stroller seat, you can put the car seats in the double stroller, which is amazing. But then eventually you can take them out once they are able to support their head in a stroller. And this stroller is really nice because you can face the seats in towards each other so they can see each other face them out face them towards you whatever it's a really nicely designed stroller so i recommend the maxi cozy miko 30 car seats and then the contours elite double stroller okay moving on to the feeding category so as i already mentioned the grown z double bottle warmer number one on the feeding list but obviously bottles so you can choose whichever brand you want we used Medela bottles my only recommendation is to just go ahead and buy the big ones so they'll either sell small bottles or big bottles like four ounce or eight ounce just get the big variety because you stop using the small ones really soon it feels like really soon after the babies are born i recommend you get at least 10 and then slow flow and medium flow nipples. So the babies will start off with slow flow and then eventually once they're capable of it, use the medium flow. They do also sell packs that have um, bottles, nipples, and then covers to screw on to travel. And that's kind of nice to have the little covers. One of those little packs that has bottles, nipples, covers is really nice. But the only thing I'll say, just a little hack, 
if you remember this piece of information when you go to feed your baby a bottle. If the baby is struggling to actually get milk out of the bottle and it's crying or is looking frustrated, little small hack, just a little side note for you. Loosen the lid, like loosen it and kind of re-close it a little bit, just a little gently because Something I used to do was close my bottle lids really, really tight, and then my boys would get a little frustrated. They'd be like, no, you know, I'm frustrated. And then I didn't know what was going on, and this was actually when I was in the NICU, and they said, oh, loosen the bottle lid. And that can release whatever pressure was in the bottle, and the milk flows more smooth, easily out. So that became part of our routine whenever we would assemble our bottle, we would screw it on and then kind of crack it a little bit to vent the bottle. <laughs> Who knew? I, you know, I didn't want the milk leaking everywhere, so I, I would always screw it on really tight. But, uh, you know, it's just a little FYI. <laughs> if you remember that and it comes in handy, uh, there you go. And then in terms of washing and drying the bottles, just some kind of a bottle scrubber. So uh, a sponge or a scrubber that can go down inside of the bottle and then a bottle drying rack would be essential. So if you go the formula route, I highly recommend from the beginning, so like now, get a mixer pitcher. Dr. Brown's makes a mixer mixing pitcher, which is exactly what it sounds like. So you mix formula and water in a batch quantity and you mix it and the way it mixes it is brilliant. It mixes the formula and the water evenly. I mentioned that because I didn't know about that. And so I had been shaking individual bottles of formula and water. I would just combine it, shake it up and give it to the babies. They'd be really gassy and burpy. But then when I stumbled upon the mixing pitcher, I noticed a big change in the babies. They weren't nearly as gassy and not burping as much because the formula was finally evenly mixed. The way this whole thing, I keep doing this because that's the motion you do. Like you, when you mix it up, you kind of like, it's like you're churning butter and you evenly mix the formula with the water and it doesn't have many air bubbles at all. And then you just kind of pour out your bottles for the day. So it helps you plan ahead, helps you, you know, get everything evenly mixed and it is, it is a life-saving hack. So if you do end up going the formula route, which there is no shame in that at all, uh, the mixing pitcher is totally essential. Okay, <laughs> this is kind of funny and it seems a little over the top, but if you have a multi-story home and your fridge is downstairs and your nursery and your bedroom are upstairs, uh, a mini fridge was super helpful. So they have little cheap ones on Amazon. I will put a link, you know, I've put a link in the description to everything I'm talking about, but specifically, you know, my fridge. I loved this thing. It was small, but it was just enough to store all of my milk. Uh, and I didn't have to run up and down from my room to the kitchen and back to get my bottles, to get the milk or the formula or whatever. Really, it seems like over the top to have a mini fridge, but I'm telling you, it's the little things that save those little amounts of time that make life so much easier. So a mini fridge is a worthwhile investment if you have your room on a different level than your kitchen. Okay, then storage bags. So if you plan to pump or breastfeed, storage bags for you to actually store your milk in the freezer or the fridge, are an essential. I do recommend Medela over Lansano. So the Medela bags are just stiffer, sturdier, a much better design than the flimsy Lansano bags. Uh, those are just two different brands and I have used both and I do prefer the Medela brand. So nursing pads are totally an essential if you are planning to try to breastfeed and if it, you know, goes that way. Nursing pads are just, they sit right inside of your nursing bra and help you not spill and leak through your whole bra and your shirt. I had my little box of nursing pads right by me and that brand is actually Lansano. Totally, that was a really great brand. I just got the big boxes and I would just get those little nursing pads out and 
they were, they were my little companion during my breastfeeding days. Then along with that, nipple cream. So I will put a link to the specific kind I used, but some kind of just soothing ointment cream was important because you might not think of it, but like it can get painful and it can get uncomfortable. And some soothing cream is a little self-care for you. <laughs> To put it lightly, it, it can get pretty painful. It's also safe for the baby if you use that. So it's, it's all good. Then pumping is unfortunately, I mean, or fortunately, gonna be an essential part of your routine if you're trying to build a milk supply for your twins, especially in those early days. Insurance companies do cover a pump in most cases. And if they don't, I will put a link to the kind of pump that I used. Everyone has their own preferences but I used Medela and it worked just fine for me. And going along with that, I also used something called Pumpin' Pals. So again, with the ointment, I had a lot of pain during my nursing experience. Somewhere along the line, it got like actual, like really, really bad pumping pain, I would say. And one of my lactation counselors recommended these things called pump and pals. And they did, they were, they were a silicone insert to the flange, the pumping flange. So it just sits inside and it's like soft and the soft silicone insert did make it a little more comfortable. So I recommend looking into pump and pals in the future because it could be a good preventative measure to avoid the pain, the pumping pain. All right, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of these, but, or this, the Haka pump, H-A-A-K-A-A. -A -A -A. It is so cool. It is a, just like a little jar, but it's a pump because it catches milk that when you nurse on one side, it catches the milk on the other that would have otherwise been wasted. So I have made videos on my channel of how to use it, but it's pretty much this thing that like suctions to your other side and there's a whole way you do it. You squeeze it, you flip it inside out, you put it on and you let it go. And yeah, it's kind of, it's, a little, it's not that complicated, but it's absolutely worth it because that milk would have been wasted and if you do have the goal of breastfeeding and pumping for your babies you know you don't want any of that milk to go to waste so if you are nursing on one side there will be probably milk coming out of the other and this hack of pump is just amazing because it creates this suction on the other side and collects what would have otherwise been wasted there are different generations of the hack of pump there's a small one there's a large one and then there's one that actually connects to a bottle base i actually prefer the the large one that's not connected to the bottle base. So I'll put a link to the one that I preferred in the description. But the Hacka Pump is a genius design because it helps you not be wasteful of your liquid gold, okay? Then nursing bras. The, the nursing bra that I recommend is the Simple Wishes brand. I tried multiple different brands and the Simple Wishes was just, you know, it's not, fancy or anything but it's like your workhorse pumping bra that's gonna like support your pumping parts the best it, you know again it's not the most beautiful but the ones that are beautiful are not functional i'm just telling you that right now the ones that look good from the outside don't really work that well on the inside so the simple wishes hold the pumping parts in place oh and you know i'm saying nursing bra but it's really pumping so it works for the purpose of nursing if you you know want to whip it out and nurse but for pumping it, it it is the best for pumping it holds the actual pump parts in place but nursing you know they have regular nursing bras that just the the top comes down and you don't need something that's going to hold the pumping parts in place so the simple wishes bra is really best for pumping and pumping will inevitably be part of your experience if you're trying to build a milk supply for twins. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna have some nursing tops. 
I really preferred flowy tops. I liked flowy that looked like regular shirts and I actually wore them a long time after I was done nursing. The ones that just kind of look like flowy regular tops. And then a nursing cover. So if you are a social person, you're around your family, you have a babysitter coming over and you just want to be somewhat modest, like when I was in the NICU with my boys, I didn't want all the people coming in and seeing me try to pump and nurse and everything like that. So I would have a nursing cover and they sell multiple different kinds, but I think, you know, just getting like three of them or something would be nice. And then burp cloths. <laughs> burp cloths are essential. And I would say they fall into the feeding category because they have to do with, you know, when you feed the baby and then you burp it over your shoulder. I mean, I had stacks of burp cloths everywhere in my house. The Burt's Bees brand of burp cloth, they're just nice little soft, smooth burp cloths. We totally love those. Then I'm sure your doctor has already told you this, but if you do plan to breastfeed, continue taking your prenatal vitamins. So that would be a feeding essential keep taking your prenatal vitamin because you know it depletes you of a lot and you also need to still keep giving all the right nutrients to your baby so prenatal vitamin so that wraps it up for the feeding category and if you're still with me i'm gonna go through all of my baby must-haves and i'll specify which ones i think it's important for you to have two of as a parent of multiple babies a swing a baby swing Two. You definitely need two baby swings to put your babies in it while you have your hands free for a couple of seconds. I've put a link in the description to the specific kind of baby swings that I used, but you can do your own shopping and whatever you prefer or what your friends recommend. Go with that, but I do recommend having two. Daca tots, but they are just a little cushy, portable bassinet, but they're not, they're not a bassinet. Just look a little cushion to put the babies on the ground and they kind of have bumpers on the side. So it's a comfortable place to just put them if you're moving around, if you're going over to your family's house for the day and you just want a safe, clean little place to put them on the ground. Two of those because you want to be able to put both of the babies down on the ground on their little daca tots. Okay, and then car seat covers, stroller covers. So I've already talked about the car seats. I've talked about the stroller covers. What I what I was given and my shower ended up being just one of my most frequently used items ever. Very simple design. It's just like a like t-shirt material that pulls right over the car seat or the stroller seat and it has like an opening right here so they can get some ventilation they can see out but it's like a breathable little t-shirt material that goes right over and so you need two of those to cover each of your car seats each of your stroller seats or whatever baby carrier only one so they do have the double baby carrier where you can put both babies on. It's called like the We Go Baby Carrier. That was a gift to me from my parents. And I am somebody who lives still to this day with very severe back pain. And carrying both of my babies on my front was not an option for me. But I did recently do a review on the Grown Z Baby Carrier. It has a little hip rest very very good for people with back pain and if you just birthed twins you're probably going to have some level of hip and back pain that you need a nice supportive baby carrier a baby carrier is important to keep one baby with you while you hold the other to kind of transport them places so it's it's hard to actually physically carry both of them although we've all done it and you'll do it at some point too but to have one of them secured to you while you have one on your hip either taking them out to the car and loading them in the car seats taking them from one story down to the next to put them in the baby swings to take them from upstairs to downstairs to put them in the high chairs you know to be able to have one secured to you while you carry the other and then load one in then take the other one out of the baby carrier. So that's why it's not necessary to have the double baby carrier. Just single and only one of them. A diaper pail. Although you might think you need two diaper pails, you don't need two diaper pails. But get a nice big one. 
So the brand that we got, it's very nice. Uh, and we got the big kind, but I wish I would have got the next size up, like the mega. Don't think that you could possibly get too, too big of a diaper pail for your twins. The bigger, the better in terms of diaper pails. Okay, now the rest of these, because they're all just baby essentials, I'm not gonna go into extensive detail on each of them, and I am just gonna list them off. Pacifiers. My boys didn't end up using pacifiers long term. Just get a couple to have on hand. Try them out for fun. Swaddles, like Halo Swaddle Sleep Sacks, the things that wrap around in the NICU, that's what they wrapped the babies in. They would put them in a onesie and a sleeper and then a swaddle where their little arms are by their side. Those are essential. Some kind of a sound machine. You do wanna make sure that the sound machine isn't cranked up so loud that it could hurt the baby's hearing. The particular kind that we got has options of other sounds and other songs and it's a nice, it's a nice version of a sound machine, but it does have the capability of going really loud. So you don't wanna max it out when you use the sound machine. A baby bathtub. We ended up going through three different kinds of baby bathtubs, and I have put a link in the description to the one that I will go get out of storage again and use from the beginning next time. The Ubi Wipes Dispenser. Okay, I'll say a little something about this too. It's a weighted wipes dispenser. It helps you save some money by saving your wipes. It's designed to have this little block that sits right on top of the stack of wipes that weighs it down so that when you pull the wipes out, you only pull out one at a time. Rather than pull, reaching in the wipes container and pulling out a whole stack of like 10 at a time. So this kind of a wipes dispenser was total lifesaver and money saver. Multiple wipeable changing pads. This also goes without saying that in your nursery, you know, you set your nursery up however you want with one or two cribs. We use two, a changing table and usually a dresser. So I'm working under the assumption that that's how your nursery is set up. For your changing pad, they have wipeable changing pads so you can wipe off the poop. A play mat is really nice. So the specific kind of play mat we got, we still use to this day. It's a also wipeable, big, pretty, double-sided, cushy play mat. It was totally worth the money. It's a comfortable place for the babies to explore and learn and try to roll over and crawl. Snot sucker. You've probably heard of the snot sucker before, but you know, if your babies get a little congested, put the little thing on their nostril, suck the snot out, and it doesn't go into your mouth. Just so you know, there's a little, little blocker somewhere along the line, and it doesn't go into your mouth, but it helps relieve the baby of little congestion if they have it. And that's it. I still feel like I didn't even cover a lot of newborn items that you need. Diapers, wipes, mobile for them to look at, like hanging toys, uh, a little mirror toy. I feel like the only kind of a toy that they really engaged with in this early phase was a mirror that had a couple little items on it that were very engaging. But you know, I think that's really all. I was a lot but those were all of the essentials that seriously, if I had to do it all over again, that's what I would be using. Every single one of those items. There was nothing on that list that was like, eh, you only used it sometimes. It wasn't absolutely essential. I wouldn't really use it. No, everything I have mentioned today and all of the links in my description are the brands and the products that I used and would use again. Definitely leave me a comment if you have any questions about anything that I said, or leave me a comment if you just wanna to touch base. You know, if you are a new twin parent to be, I would love to connect with you and be your friend. And you know, in my family, we say like, it takes a village to raise these babies. And it's so true. And I would love nothing more than to be a part of your village and to help you and support you and love you through this process. So 
wherever you are in your twin parent journey, definitely leave me a comment and reach out and let me know where you are and how you're doing and any other questions you have or any other videos you would like to see about twin parenting and twin life and twin babies and what to expect because I'm, I'm happy to offer any information I have. I don't have it all figured out at all. <laughs> I did it one time and uh, I feel equipped to do it again because I've been taking diligent notes. <laughs> I hope this was helpful and I hope you're doing well and I do look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Okay, bye! Thank you.